Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of The Powerful Man Show. I am your host, Doug Holt, with my co-host, Tim, The Powerful Man Matthews. Gentlemen, we have an exciting episode to come in for you, but uh, before we get into the four horsemen, I'm not talking about the four horsemen of the apocalypse, just the four horsemen. Um, there's some exciting things going on within the movement that have been great to see. And uh, Tim, it's really great to see you know the guys coming in and then the ability for some of the men that have reached out to us off just looking for one-on-one -on -one coaching and one-on-one -on -one guidance and, and advice coming through. So uh, that's been fun to see coming in, in the pipeline uh, as we just, you know, doing our best to, to help more and more men along the way of, of their journey. Mm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. It's, uh, there's so much value that's being created. Uh, thank you guys for tuning into this. I really... I was thinking this morning, I just really appreciate the opportunity to do this. You know, years ago, I would have loved to be in this position, right? <laughs> just being able to share and support the men and see the results that they get. Um, did intend, plan was to send a Voxer out to the team, just, you know, saying thank you for being here. But obviously, Voxer's not working. But anyway, for yeah, you. it got me thinking about the guys <laughs> that listen to the show. You know, thank you for listening and giving feedback. and. Um, because obviously we know we're on the right track and it allows us to keep going. So, yeah, I'm really proud of what we're doing and the results the men get and the guys that are reaching out. It's just such a great thing. I really enjoy it. Yeah, it's it's absolutely awesome. Definitely an honor um, to be here and seeing all the progress these guys are making. Um, shout out to the guys in the inner circle. We're going to be, looks like, <clears throat> putting on an event for them, specifically a VIP event. We'll be able to pull that off uh, amidst COVID. Uh, the Inner Circle is a, is a higher-end mastermind group for guys that have already graduated the activation method. And so it looks like we're going to be able to get those guys together in April, which I'm really excited about uh, as things start to open up. But Tim, I want to talk today about the four horsemen and not the four horsemen of the apocalypse, as you've probably heard, like from the biblical tales and, and movies, you know, you have this image of these four kind of ghostly creatures with hoods on, you know, riding these horses as, as death, you know, uh, follows them. And, uh, but this is similar. We're going to talk about the four horsemen in a relationship. And the things that we're going to talk about today are, are such that Dr. Gottman, who came up with these, can predict with a 90% accuracy that if these four horsemen show up in a relationship and they aren't mitigated, they aren't, you don't get rid of them, that that relationship will end. That's amazing. There's not many things in life that you can predict with a 90% accuracy. I mean, I was thinking about this, you know, uh, as I was jumping in the shower before getting ready to jump on with you. I was like, man, what are things that, you know, besides myself, other things outside of me that I can predict with a 90% accuracy? I couldn't come up with many. So <laughs> coming with that, obviously you can't either. <laughs> no, I mean, there's nothing to add to that point, right? I, this is, we're showing off our preparation skills. Because uh, you, you're like, what are we talking about? Uh, so guys, I'm also going to let you know, at the end of this episode, if you stick around, I'm going to give you access to a worksheet that you can work through to really get some insight into this. So stick around to the end. I'll tell you exactly how you can get this worksheet, the, excuse me, uh, the worksheet. Uh, so this is almost like going to be a podcast episode that'll be almost like a mini workshop. Uh, and so for guys that have been in the Facebook group for a while, you've seen some videos that I put out about this topic, um, but I wanted to expand this out a little bit more. So again, let's go back to the four horsemen and Dr. Gottman's research. So it's amazing. So imagine 90% accuracy. This is like having a crystal ball in your relationship. So this could be relationships, obviously your marriage, which is what we're going to use as an example here today, but also relationships with your kids, coworkers, right? Friends, um, any relationship you have, you want to watch out for these four horsemen. But for most of our audience, which are married businessmen, they're going to see this in their marriage, right? That's the clearest path and the path that we get the most triggers in, right? The, when I say trigger, something that's going to set you off. Right, it upsets you. It's almost like um, lighting a match right next to a, a, a fire <laughs> that's already burning with gasoline. So let's talk about these four horsemen today, how they show up, and kind of you know an idea of what the the antidote is or the antidote could be. 
uh, on these so you guys don't have to fall into those. So the first one is criticism, right? And criticism, when you think about, what do you think about when you think of criticism, Tim, as it relates to communication and a relationship? Um, negativity, ungratefulness, um, complaining, mm, less so complaining, but complaining. Um, yeah, they're the things that stand out. Yeah, and so when we talk about criticism as it relates to the four horsemen, Criticism typically is an attack on someone's character, right? And, you know, in my experience, in my relationships, and then, but also looking, working with the guys, it often is an absolute. You always X, Y, Z, you know, you know, you never X, Y, Z, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and what's going on. And it's the attack on the character that's the biggest issue here. And when you're looking at things that are, are being criticized, Something like, um, you're always thinking about yourself. You never think about everyone else, right? That could be something that you could say or you could hear. You could be receiving this attack, right? That is attacking the character of the person, right? Basically, what I'm saying there in that example is you are always in your own world. You never think of anybody else. That's a character flaw. And when that criticism comes out, it's attack again on our our character, our ego immediately kicks in and wants to defend ourselves, right? We go immediately into, into defensiveness. You usually actually go into contempt, but you'll go in, you'll start defending yourself and you'll get upset right away. And when we use this, one of the four horsemen in relationship, you know, in this communication style, what's happening with this criticism is it's really shutting down the other person. So if you're saying this to your wife, if you're criticizing her, she's going to shut down and or attack you, right? And we'll talk about that because it leads into the other four horsemen that are the other three, excuse me, that are coming in. And it really doesn't pave a way for, for good communication. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can see that. It's, um, especially if, if you're not really honoring your side of the agreement, let's say. Mm -hmm. I know for me to be specific here, often the men we speak with, they're in this place where they're blaming the wife she doesn't do this she does that and i get it you know we've all been there and it's it's interesting because if they were to look around okay well what how are you showing up what are you doing you know when we criticize often you know the other person can easily point at things that the person who's criticizing also isn't doing as well so it's it makes it a lot it can make it a lot worse because you also can come across as being quite ignorant too Yep. Um, you know, and maybe a little bit arrogant to a degree. No, oh, absolutely. Um, and what you're happening when you're criticizing is you're really putting that other person, you're making them, you're almost like assaulting them, like verbally assaulting their character. And they become the victim, right? Which makes you the perpetrator, Right. So now they're looking at you like you're the perpetrator. Now they're feeling like the victim. And this leads to a downward spiral. This never, I mean, could you imagine if Amelia or Aaron, my wife for me, comes in and says, you know, you never think of anybody else. You always think about yourself. Do you ever think anybody's like, oh, that's a good point? Yeah. Thanks so much for sharing that insight. <laughs> that never happens unless you're joking, right? Unless you're coming back with a joke. So I was going to say, what's the, the line here between a criticism and a shit test? Although as I was thinking about this, I guess the difference is where it comes from. Oh, completely. The energy behind it, mm -hmm. right? Um, but there also can be uh, ways, I should say. There's ways of recognizing a shit test and seeing, and that's not the part of this conversation per se, because that's a whole other issue. But, you know, you can let, you can kill this by using one of the antidotes, right? And we talk about the antidotes in the Facebook group, uh, a little bit in the worksheets, but uh, more in the Facebook group of what's the antidote to criticism, right? How do you do this? How do you change this around um, and do it? And I'll, I'm going to give a secret here on how you do that in a little bit. But if to see if this is a shit test, if Amelia comes back to you and says, you're selfish, and you're going through this, you could let it bounce off of you, right? And that is kind of an antidote, being a powerful man and standing in your power. When you're activated, you know, you've gone through the activation method. 
and done the work to be activated, it doesn't bother you as much. But if you're using this, and I think a lot of men will self-identify with some of these examples, when you're using this in your relationship and your wife isn't activated <laughs> or your partner, it's going to set her off and it's going to be a downward spiral. And she's using it on you. Usually what I see with relationships, and again, this can be not only used in the bedroom, but also in the boardroom. And that's really important because this criticism happens at work, right? And there's the difference between, you know, guys being guys and joking around, you know, you and I take riffs on each other all the time, but it's, it's, it's good spirited, right? But there's people that do this in the work environment as well, especially people who are, you know, crappy, crappy leaders, essentially, but you can do this with other people that are in your work environment um, and it still has the same effect. It usually escalates. And what I've seen is when one partner is criticizing the other, it tends to go both ways. Eventually, the criticism starts to happen in the workplace and at home, back talk starts to happen, right? If, if I feel, you know, if my wife feels like she can't criticize me because of the power dynamic, she may criticize me in front of the kids when I'm not there or in front of her friends or other things. So there is that the problem with criticism, and it's the problem with all the four horsemen, is they escalate. They mm -hmm. escalate if you don't use the antidote, right? And the antidote for them. So I'm not sure if we're going to get in the antidotes in this podcast, but because I want to make sure we get through all the four horsemen so guys can recognize. But guys, just so you know, when you want the antidote and you want to get out of this, there's definitely the answers we have available for you. And it's a free Facebook group that we're running right now that you can go ahead and grab those in there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, just thinking, but in that situation right now without knowing the antidotes, it seems to me like there's three options. You, when you're facing criticism, you either rise up to it, right? Which, yep. depending on how you do it, could make it worse. You either back down, and again, depending on how you do it, you kind of become like a bit of a beta, which again, makes it worse. <laughs> yeah. Um, or you're able to stand your ground and, and stay neutral. Uh, but even still, if it persists, you can only stand your ground for so long before really you start to fall into the trap of just allowing something and losing losing your boundaries and along with it, respect. Yeah, and I think the important thing to distinguish here is the difference between criticism and a complaint, right? Mm -hmm. Criticism is an attack on character, not a complaint. And a complaint, when you're doing it, really you're owning your side of the street, right? Um, you can complain, you could say something like, um, gosh, you, you know, you didn't grab my, my jacket. I really wish you would. Cause I, you know, I thought I needed it because I was too cold. And I'm talking about me, right? It's a little, it's a, not the greatest example in the world, but I'm trying to distinguish between what a complaint could be versus a criticism. But I think what's really mm -hmm. important is the greater the frequency of these criticisms, the faster they're going to escalate. And what they escalate with and happen in greater frequency and intensity, what does that lead to? Mm. Contempt, which is our second horseman, right? Yeah, I spoke with a guy last, I spoke, well, I spoke with a lot of guys actually the past week. And the wives are saying, you know, I wish you'd just man up. So, well, what does that mean? You know, it was better when you were at work more. Can't mm. you just go to work? Some, oh, some cutting things, some yeah. really cutting things. So, it isn't necessarily. Man up is definitely a criticism, but yeah, at least the second one of contempt because then the guys that I'm speaking to at least, I'm like, well, what do I do with that? What does that mean? Okay, well, I'll try and man up by, you know, uh, doing the dishes or finishing work early. But that's not, again, obviously it's not what she wants and it just makes it worse because then these guys are like, hang on a minute, I'm, I'm doing the dishes, I'm doing the other and it's not working and Hence the second part of contempt. Which is, you know, she is expressing contempt here, right? Contempt mm -hmm. is being mean. It's it's various versions of sarcasm and not the funny joking sarcasm, you know, as we you know, might talk about, but it's ridicule, it's name calling. Like when you say mm -hmm. you bet you need a man up, you're basically saying, Hey, you're a pussy, right? In, in you're, most modern you're ways. Boy, you're another kid. I'm yeah. looking after four kids here. Yes, we got three okay. kids. Yeah, yeah. He's a fourth. There you go. You're a child. Um, it can also just be body language, right? With with contempt. 
Mm -hmm. Eye rolling is the most popular one that we see as men from the women. You're having a conversation with your wife or anybody, but your wife, and she just rolls her eyes. I mean, that just could set you off, right? Like, oh my gosh, right? Because that's content, right? She, she has contentment for you or that situation that you're in. And this is the second one, right? We go to criticism, we get criticized, and then it goes to contentment, right? These go down in order. And that's the fascinating thing that Dr. Gottman figured out. Again, 90% accuracy if you see these four horsemen showing up in a relationship and they don't get resolved, the relationship's over. 90%. I, I just want to drive that home because it blows my mind that he's able to predict this with that level of accuracy coming and, through here. And these are stages of escalation, right? They do go, yes, they escalate. They can all happen in one conversation, obviously, and they can happen yep. right away. But as you said in the example you gave about this guy, this gentleman you were talking to, I mean, obviously, went criticism to contempt right away, right? It's all in the same sentence, in the same delivery. Um, yeah, for him, again, I'm just thinking of this one guy in particular, although this resonates with, God, a lot of men and a lot of men we've spoken to in the past. Um for the woman, when she's not getting a response from the man, she's not getting the response that she wants, at least. And, you know, the guy kind of wants to be told, well, what to do. And, you know, the woman doesn't necessarily always know what she wants him to do, and that's fine. Um, but the second stage of contempt that it escalates to, for a lot of the guys I speak to, at least, is the fact that they're stuck in this place where she is making, um, she is, com well, not complaining, but, What's the first, remind me the first horseman, Doug? Criticism. Criticism. She's making criticisms, which start as complaints a lot of the time, and the guys don't necessarily hear them. You know, hey, I'm doing all the right things. They don't hear them. And for this one guy, literally before we jumped on, he'd been, it's escalated over about a year or so to the point of contempt. Yeah, and, and contentment is, is really, really bad. And as a lot of the guys on here that have done any, you know, have read the news or the research has been in the news all over that when you have contentment studies show that you have a weakened immune system. And this is why you see couples that are not doing well together. They're getting sick more often. And when they get sick more often, obviously your energy's down, things are down. It tightens the relationship and the four horsemen just start attacking, right? They're just coming at you with, with velocity. And it's amazing. We talk about the mind-body connection and how these things work. Well, here we are. We're only on the second horseman and your immune system's already going down, guys. Right? You know, if this is where the, the triadic connection wipes these things away. I mean, you want to talk, we'll talk about antidotes for each of these uh, uh, four horsemen. But if you want something that's going to be like a broad sword swiping and just chopping the heads off all four, triadic connection right away. It, it's We've seen it work time and time again uh, going through. Um, so I'm going to give an example of what some guys might say, uh, maybe me possibly <laughs> previously, as I call it Doug 1.0, but what some guys might say in this situation that'll come across as, as contentment that they might not realize, right? They might not realize they're saying it. So an example is a, a man comes home after a long day, right? Just have meetings all day, uh, you know, you're slaying it, staff issues, whatever it is, you're stressed, you've had a long friggin' day. You come into the house, your wife comes up to you, she walks by kind of in a huff, right? Ugh. And she goes, ah, I've been with these kids all day. And you go, give me a break. You've been with the kids all day. I've been at work dealing with vendors, with clients, with staff. You're just a, a stay-at-home mom, and we have a babysitter and a housekeeper. What are you doing? You just sit on the couch all day. You have time to nap when the kids aren't here. So, you know, what do you want to be, just a trophy wife? And the guy walks away. That's an example, right? Because we're attacking there. We're doing name calling um, going through. This ridicule and name calling happens so often, and men just don't realize they're doing it um, right away. It's kind of like, uh, you know, when someone says, this is my problem, this is what's going on for me, and you're like, give me a break. That's nothing compared to my problems, right? That's so often in most society, you hear people talk like that all the time. And this is where you're getting into contempt. And it really causes a ton, a ton of problems in a relationship. Um, and, you know, it's actually, Dr. Gottman said, contempt is the single greatest predictor of divorce. Single greatest predictor of divorce. So it's got to be, it's got to be eliminated. It's got to be eliminated. Um, and I'll give you guys a secret antidote for this one. 
It's gratefulness Mm. and appreciation. So Mm -hmm. a gratefulness practice, which we teach in advanced one, it's really cool. Tim, I'm not sure if you saw this in, in our private community for the alumni, but a lot of the alumni are going through led by what we call the accountability assassin, Lee Jack, a gratefulness Mm -hmm. practice. They're doing a challenge right now. I think they're doing 30 or 60 day challenge on just different variations of gratefulness and appreciation practices. And everybody's bringing to the table what they've learned through the powerful man and through other resources. Um, The guys are seeing phenomenal results, but this is one of the reasons, you know, that you really want to have a great appreciation practice and a gratefulness practice, not only internally in in your, your day. I mean, if you guys are doing the alpha rise and shine, you're already killing it, right? You're doing the decompression at the end of the day. You got it. But you also want to do this with your partner. And again, since most of our lit- our listeners are business leaders, you want to do this with your staff too, guys. Now, we're going to use the marriage as the primary example here, but these four horsemen show up in any relationship, right? And with anything. Um, and it's just one of the reasons I appreciate you so much, Tim. <laughs> so something you want to throw out there time and time again, guys, and show appreciation and show gratefulness, um, which I know can be difficult when things are rough. When things are rough, they could be really, really tough. Uh, I was talking to a guy that's in our community, in our Facebook community, and he watched one of the videos that I put out there on this. He's like, Doug, honestly, man, right now, I can't think of anything to be grateful or appreciative of my wife. Not a thing. So I go, all right, I get that. You know, I've been there, man. <laughs> I've been there when things are that bad. <laughs> they're like, do I need to go on the dark web and hire somebody? They're like so bad that <laughs> you're, you're looking for, you know, uh, a permanent solution for a temporary problem right? Uh, going through there. And I asked him, I said, look, I go, do you have kids? He said, yeah, I got three kids. They're amazing. I go, oh, great. Do you appreciate your wife for bringing those? It's the same woman you're married to. And he's like, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. I go, she a good mom? Yeah. You know what? She's a great mom. Just really shitty wife. Not good. I go, no, no, stop there. You just said she's a great mom. How appreciative could, should you be about her taking care of your kids while you're out doing what you're doing? He goes, shit, you're right. Great, that's one. Just, just stick with that. You don't need two right now. Stick with that and be in that space of, of appreciation there and maybe share it with her and just see what her reaction is from, from, from a heart-centered place. Because if you don't, guess what happens, Tim? The horsemen come in and swipe you down. They do, they do. Horseman number three shows up, Right. Horseman three shows up is defensiveness, right? Mm -hmm. The third horseman to show up in the the arena is defensiveness. And don't we all get it, right? This is where a lot of guys fall into the Mr. Nice Guy trap, right? You start defending your actions. You start defending yourself. So an example could be, um, you know, Amelia can come up to you, Tim, as an example, or Aaron can come to me and say, hey, I noticed that the, the trash bins aren't out, haven't been taken out. Uh, You said you were going to do it this morning. And you respond, well, geez, don't you know, I'm so busy that, you know, I know you walked by them. Obviously you saw that they haven't been taken out. Why didn't you just take them out? I'm, I'm busy doing so many other things, right? That level of defensiveness just really starts to escalate uh, fights in a relationship and happens all the time. And there's a key thing with defensiveness. Key thing, guys. If you recognize, and all of you should, because all of you do defensiveness, we all do, right? If you recognize that you can get defensive, this is going to suck. It's going to sting. You are actually switching from the power role to the victim mode. In that example, I'm basically saying, I'm a victim. I don't have enough time. I don't, right? The antidote to this is, and it's been written about, it's really popular right now in popular and pop culture, is taking extreme ownership, right? Jocko Willink wrote a book about extreme ownership. A lot of people, you take, you. we've been saying this for years, you own your side of the street, right? Same conversation happens. Amelia walks up to you, Tim. She says, hey, I noticed it, you know, you said you're going to take the trash out this morning. You know, here it is at 7 p.m. and the trash isn't out. And then Tim, you could come back with something very eloquent, just saying, you know, I got caught up doing some other stuff. You're co- totally correct. I'll go, I can go ahead and take those out now or I can get those later right? You're taking ownership for it. You're just taking ownership for the action. So remember, again, for the eighth time, 90% accuracy that these horsemen show up 
and you don't use the antidote or solution, your relationship's going to be over. And so defensiveness is a great one. And defensiveness escalates because what happens when you defend yourself? Amelia, your wife, you guys who are listening to this, your wife, she starts defending herself. And then you defend yourself again. And then she, you start making your case. It's like a bad court case going back and forth like a bad ping pong match. The ball just keeps getting volleyed back, back, and it, get, it escalates. And if it escalates enough, it goes to what can be some men's number one, which is the last of the four horsemen, which is stonewalling. Mm. Withdrawing. Yep. Mm-hmm. It's a big one. You know, I, I used to Dude. do this. This is the way yeah. I thought this was the right thing to do because, you know, I was raised that you never hit a woman, you never yell at a woman, you treat women with respect and dignity. And to me, part of that was instead of getting angry, I just withdrew. I left. I left the situation, the interaction. I shut down. Now, I could have physically left, which I used to do when I was dating in relationships. I just walk out the frigging door. I just get up, go, I'm out, and just walk out. But what happens a lot of times is us guys is we emotionally check out. Mm-hmm. Porn, alcohol, work, phone, food. Yeah. Or we just check out. Like actually in the conversation, we mentally go somewhere else. Oh, um, yeah. But that energy's got to go somewhere, right? Uh, inevitably. It's not like you just check out and you're in a you're at home and then all these contentments there and everything else, you, you, you just, to deal with it, you're going to, this is where a lot of guys will just, like I said a moment ago, find avenues that are definitely not healthy, definitely destructive. Because then yeah, it reminds me of the five agonies as well, right? As you start going through those, uh, which feed into, this, they're like the outcomes of the horseman, it sounds like to me. Um, it's a tough spot to be. Because then the shame stacks and you and you want to isolate yourself. And again, you know, it's fantasizing about other women, all sorts. Slippery slope. Yeah, it really is. And, you know, what I would do, I remember Aaron, my wife, telling me this. This is before we got married or maybe right after. I can't remember. But I remember her stopping me and telling me, like, we were having one of those heart-to-heart type conversations. And this was one of those eye-opening, holy shit moments for me. And I've shared this before on the podcast. But she, she said to me, I would rather you hit me than shut down on me. I was like, what are you talking about? You'd rather me hit you? Like, uh, it's ridiculous. Like, one is like, she knew I would never hit her, and I wouldn't. But she's like, it's more emotionally abusing to me or to a woman than to be physic to be mentally to have be stonewalled because I need that I crave the attachment the connection and you're denying when you stonewall me you deny me that connection and I'd rather you just hit me and then have that connection. It's kind of like women fight to connect men fight to win right and when men they try and apply the logical lens it serves them so well in business to the woman and the relationship. And wonder, well, why doesn't it work? It doesn't work because, you know, she's wanting the connection like Erin's talking about there. Yeah, and it's crazy. But it happens because those four horsemen were in my marriage early on. And that's why we almost divorced. Right? Those four horsemen were there. And we were like, both of us on both sides. Right? I was doing it. She was doing it. We just didn't know. We didn't have the triadic connection at the time. But we didn't have the tools to do any better. We loved each other, right? I thought being a nicer guy was the answer, which didn't work as we all know, completely deactivated me, right? Going through there. And then the four horsemen would keep showing up regardless of the way that either of us acted or showed up in our relationship. And until we figured out the antidotes to these, it just caused so much stress. I mean, I remember thinking I being in the office and just a contentment, right? Building inside of me because I was so upset of all the things that she was, was not doing right. Same thing for her. And these four another, horsemen almost word, a relationship. Mm, sounds like another word for contentment is resentment. 
is same thing. You can, yeah, yeah. Content, but content. When you think about contentment, it's really you're you're doing it to insult somebody, and then based off content, oh, yeah. and that builds up resentment, mm-hmm. right? And so that mm-hmm. comes on. So let's talk about let's go let's do kind of a quick review of the four horsemen, and I'll give an antidote for each of them, and then you know we'll jump in and and share anything we want to uh, based on that. Does that sound like a good plan? Yeah, let's do it. Cool. <laughs> awesome. Um, so the first one, again, is criticism, right? You're criticizing a person, you're attacking their character coming through. And so the best thing to do is use positive I statements, right? You're talking about you, what you want. You know, I want this. I desire this, Right. That's a great way of doing it. I would like a beer delivered to me on the couch. <laughs> you know, whatever you're, I joke a lot, but whatever you're going to criticize somebody about, change it and talk about and express what's coming up for you as an individual. We call it feelings, but if you don't want to call them feelings, just say what's occurring for you in the I form that has nothing to do with the other person. That's how you can bypass criticism. Let's say you went down to contentment. Right, we've already talked about the antidote here. Remember, contentment is, as you just said, it's an assault. You're you're verbally assaulting the person, and the thing is, is to build a relationship. Uh, if you're in business, you can call it a culture in your family of appreciation. Right, that's the biggest thing you can do. It's the antidote, and that antidote, you know, puts out this poison. Right, it takes that for that this second horseman out of the picture, and the more you do it. And if you do that, usually you don't even get the third one, but let's just say you do. The third horseman, remember, is defensiveness, right? That's defending your position. You're defending blame or that you feel like you're being attacked. And we already talked about this antidote, which is taking responsibility, taking ownership. Now, ownership where it's due, not don't take ownership for things you don't need to take ownership for. Stand your ground, have your boundaries, but take ownership and take ownership as you need to. And if that builds up, the fourth we got here from the fourth horseman uh, is stonewalling, right? You're withdrawing. You're withdrawing really to avoid conflict, disapproval, um, anything that doesn't feel good. And the way to do this, and I learned this as well, and then I'll give you a, a pro tip on this as well, is you just say, hey, look, Tim, I need to take a break right now, and we'll come back to this conversation later. I need to go for a walk. I need to go do push-ups or what have you. Um, Now, the pro tip with this is give yourself... What's that? Go do push-ups. Just going to go book a rage room. I'll be back soon. You've seen me go do push-ups on team meetings at times when I've gotten upset. Um, So, so, you know, I got to move the energy, right? I got the testosterone's in me. It's running. I'm pissed. You know, I can either stonewall or I can just drop mm-hmm. down during the meeting and do 10 push-ups or whatever, pop back up. All right. I feel better. Mm-hmm. Uh, and continue the conversation. And, and that's a great thing. I mean, one of the great things about, and this is why a lot of the alumni want to be involved with the, the movement afterwards is because the men have these skill sets. You know, we can go head to head and have complete disagreements, but we always come to a great end point. Sometimes we have to do push-ups. Sometimes we just talk about it. So, you know, we go through, if you think about this, Tim, we go through these four horsemen within the movement. And at the same time, we use these antidotes uh, consciously Mm -hmm. or unconsciously. Um, But here's the pro tip with this, guys. If you're going to tell your wife or anybody for that matter, hey, I need need to take a break. I need to go for a walk. Tell them when you're going to continue the conversation, right? So, Mm -hmm. look, I need to take a walk. We can have this conversation. We'll continue this conversation in two hours. We'll continue this conversation tomorrow. Continue this conversation on Saturday. And make time for that, right? Honor your word, honor your commitments. But close the loop. If you don't close the loop, you can leave the woman in that same state of stonewalling, right? There's not much difference. Hey, I just need to go for a walk. She's feeling that withdrawal. If you let her know that that's going to be closed, that loop is going to be closed at a specific time, she can rest back into her femininity, right? She can go back into her femininity and you are leading, you're leading the paradigm, you're leading the situation, and she can choose to follow, right? It's a very powerful frame to own. So make sure you give her the end date. 
or in time when you're going to do that. But if anything, guys, what I'm going to encourage you to do is look at these four horsemen. You got to get the worksheet. So we put a, we put a, a three to four page workbook together that goes over these four horsemen and things. And guys, if you want that, uh, it's totally free. Put it together just for you guys to go through. You need to go to the Facebook group and just raise your hand. There's a post in there or you can post one of the advisors. So our advisors, just in case you guys don't know, are all alumni. They're guys that have gone through the program, guys just like you that want to stick around and help out. We call them advisors because all they do is advise. And one of them will get you the workbook, right? Just let them know. Just go ahead and put four horsemen uh, in a post and just say, I, I want the workbook. Uh, Franco, Ben, uh, Lee, some one of the guys are going to reach out to you and help you out there and they'll make sure you get that, but definitely get that workbook. And as always guys, you know, you got to do the work. Got to do the work. There's two kinds of hards here, right? It's hard to be in a crappy relationship. It's hard to do the work to get out of a crappy relationship. Which hard do you want? It's going to be hard either way. Pick your hard. I can tell you it's much better. I've been in both. <laughs> I can tell you <laughs> the hard getting out of a crappy relationship is not that hard. And it's much, much better because you get a better end result. Take some responsibility though, right? Which I know is one of the antidotes. It reminds me of um, actually some of the stuff I did this morning. I was designing one of the trainings this morning for the guys in the brotherhood and taking them through how to get your needs met without asking for it. Great and, course. Uh, on the third installment of this and um part of it is around well this is around you know taking a stand for the relationship and how do you do it how do you maintain that boundary and just introducing them to the concept of you know triggers and what's going on and how to be aware of that what's really going on with you and taking care of your side of the street and you know to communicate in a very calm firm consistent way which by default is leadership and what it does obviously is like you said creates that makes the relationship and also you a safe place to land. And it doesn't mean that things don't come up in the relationship. It doesn't mean you don't get triggered. We all get triggered. Um, but when you're able to recognize that it is all about you, it's never about the other person. It's all about you. And you start taking ownership for that and getting curious about, okay, cool. Well, I'm feeling, I'm feeling really pissed right now. So, you know, it's definitely, there are times when it's not a good time to talk about things. Like you said, Doug, you know, imagine a traffic light system. Ideally, you'd stay in the green, right? Uh, for most of the time. Sure. Well, you know, you can venture into the, the amber or the yellow, whatever you guys call it. Uh, in the UK, we call it amber. Um, you're going to venture into the amber. And ideally, you'd catch yourself there, right? Or you'd catch yourself on the border between green and amber. But you will go to rag too from time to time. So point being is back to your point. Yeah, if you want to do push-ups, go for a walk and give it time and when you will finish the conversation, do it. And when you're on that walk, reflect. Okay, well, what what is it here? What am I feeling? And uh, what has been triggered? I'm not going to go through the entire process, but um, and it's a very powerful place to be because then when you can go back into the relationship, and then share what you've discovered about yourself, right? Um, you know, let's say that you go back in and you walk into the door and you, you know, I go to Amelia and say, hey, you know, I've been thinking about this and I just want to take responsibility for my part in this. You know, I'm sorry that you feel like bum, 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 and you know, whatever I might then share to explain how I'm feeling. I realize that honestly, I was uh, scared. I felt like I'd let you down. I felt like I couldn't handle being a businessman and you know dealing with having a great relationship and you know that's that scared me to feel like i was failing it hurt yeah. and i took it out on you and I'm, I'm sorry for that you know whatever it is right bad example but you get the gist you know there's a saying the first one to be, the first one to be vulnerable wins i think it's an awesome race to be in a race to be vulnerable imagine being in that kind of race it's going to nullify these horsemen and if they continue to show up and you're doing this side and you're operating in this way then you've got a choice to make you know because if you choose to continue to tolerate that that's your choice right um the point is when you've been calm and collected and taking responsibility 
then at least you know that you're doing the best you can, right? So it's a great place to be. You know, taking ownership, in my opinion, doesn't mean that you become ashamed of what you've done, but it's very empowering, very empowering to uh-huh. be out of that place of being a victim. Well, you're in the driver's seat, right? And that's where mm-hmm. all of us men want to be, especially leaders. You want to be driving things forward. Sometimes you get confused and lost, and and that's why a lot of guys fall into these traps. They're not sure what to do. Uh, <laughs> and you get to be the leader in that situation. And... Um, and, that, and that's you know, what these guys are not doing. The, you know, the small majority of guys that we speak with who choose to not go forward with the program, now have total respect for them and their choices. And there's a commonality between them, and the commonality is a lack of responsibility mm. that they're taking. Um, and I share this with them. You know, I'm not talking about in the back here. It's not a judgment. It's an observation. They can choose to accept it or not. It's an observation that I'm seeing and basing from working with thousands of men, having thousands of these calls. We know what works. We see patterns. We know what doesn't work. See patterns. Don't have a crystal ball, but you see patterns. And when you see that a guy isn't taking responsibility, and that's been part of the problem in the relationship, he's become a nice guy. He's done what his wife is asking him to do, but she's saying things like, hey, I want you to listen to me. I want you to get me. And he's there putting his phone away and, you know, paying attention and listening and trying to solve the problem. But obviously that isn't what she wants. She's wanting the connection, right? And when that backfires, he's like, well, what's, I'm trying everything here. I'm working hard. I'm providing, you know, I'm leaving her cash. And, you know, why isn't it working? Oh, I just, I'll just become more of a nice guy. And it just doesn't work because secretly then Behind her back, he's watching porn. He's fantasizing about other women, which I get. But again, it's a lack of facing head on the horseman and taking responsibility and doing the work and choosing the hard that is the destructive hard. And there's two hards, right? One is very destructive. One is constructive. You know, it's both a pain. Both can be painful. One's gonna be painful for longer and have bigger consequences. Um. And again, this guy was just front of mind because it was right before we jumped on. In the past month, he's lost six pounds. He's not he's not been trying to lose weight. He's, he's just lost it through stress, sleepless nights. What's changed? She used to love me. She used to want to have sex with me. Now she doesn't. I've been trying all these things. What's changed? I can't, you know. And it's exactly what we're sharing with these horsemen. But yeah, responsibility. It's it's huge. I I would put responsibility as number one, to be honest, because until you're taking responsibility, it's difficult to really give appreciation, um, in my opinion, without really taking responsibility. Um, because with the responsibility, you become aware, right? I'm aware of what's going on. Yeah, but we're talking about, I think we're talking about two different things here. The four horsemen come in an escalation of a disagreement where I agree with you oh, that yeah. taking responsibility is the first thing every man should do. And the, the four horsemen is a, is a different subject. Oh, right? yeah. oh, it's yeah, a different yeah. thing coming through there. Uh, but you're spot on, right? Yeah. You guys got to take, you got to take responsibility, you know, and, and really step into it and step on it and go through that. Especially there. if you've seen the horsemen. I mean, wow. You painted a very clear, set of symptoms there there's a very clear list with antidotes as well crystal clear and a 90 percent predictability that you're going to end in divorce the relationship's over right the relationship is over with 90 percent accuracy if you don't take action and that's why it's you know the work that we do is so important to me um you know because this also crosses over and we because we obviously we go into all five territories self health wealth relationships and business but for this relationship piece, you know, this is critical. And this is really try a connection is to me is the ultimate antidote for this situation. Mm. Yeah, you know, I can see that. I can see that. I agree. So gentlemen, as we wrap up here, what I'm going to encourage you to do is get the workbook, go over to the face Facebook group, look for, if you're not in there already, it's the powerful man, Facebook group, pretty easy to find. Um, <laughs> see a beautiful picture of Tim and Arthur on there. Um, I'm also on there as well. And some of the other coaches, you'll see them in there. 
great conversations with great guys like you. And if you want that workbook, just go in there. It's the easiest way for me to get it to you and just raise your hand. If for some reason you're not on Facebook or what have you, go ahead and email support at thepowerfulman.com and just tell them you want the Four Horsemen workbook. Uh, and Doug promised that they would get it to you. And I'll make sure that they do. And they'll make sure that they get out to you right away. And again, guys, if you're new to this show, uh, we recommend you go over also and get the cheat sheet, right? It's the reignite cheat sheet that helps you reignite your relationship and just get a little taste of things that can happen. And that's over at thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus. That's thepowerfulman.com forward slash bonus. And as always, gentlemen, if you've been with us for a little while, we'd love you to leave a review. But more importantly, we want you to take action. Take these concepts, share them, but also take action on them so you can start getting results in your life right away. Gentlemen, that's a wrap for us here at the Powerful Man Show. We'll see you next time.